Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to see how much money I can save by repairing this broken Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, opposed to buying one brand new. This is Samsung's latest Note phone as of making this video, which is selling for $1,700 here in Australia. I picked up this broken one for only $358. The only thing which appears broken is the front display, which has cracked glass and a damaged OLED panel. In its current state, the phone cannot be used as you can only see about 10% of that screen. I purchased this phone from eBay and taking it out of the bubble wrap, I was left with the phone itself and no accessories or charger included. There's also some kind of magnetic phone mount glued to the back, which I'll need to remove. Now while the screen was titled, the touch is still functional. So I was able to set up the phone and after navigating into settings, I was able to confirm this is a Galaxy Note 10 Plus. I should mention that the broken part of the display is very hard to look at as it's incredibly bright. We can now shut down the device and begin our work. The first thing I'll need to do is remove this mobile phone mount thing that's on the back. I believe this is one of those magnetic type devices that latches onto a car phone mount or something similar. I really don't like these and especially when people decide to stick them to the back of their almost $2,000 smartphone. Removing them is a really big pain and I had to use plenty of heat to get this off and even when I ripped the main plastic piece off there was still this gunky residue left behind which I had to come back and remove with my finger. With that awful mount removed I placed the phone onto the preheating station. A few people recommended I got something like this, so I thought I could try this one out. Leaving the phone to heat for a few minutes, I could attempt to remove the back panel. Now, as I didn't have any heat resistant gloves, I wasn't able to get the phone too hot. So unfortunately, this method didn't work. I resorted to my old method of using this hot air station at around 200 degrees to heat the section I was working on. After heating, a standard suction cup could be applied, although it wasn't strong enough to lift up the back panel of this phone as the adhesive is incredibly strong. So I used a suction cup puller which proved effective in creating a gap between the back panel and frame of the phone. As I don't want to crack the back panel when removing it, I will continue to heat the back, further softening the adhesive before I remove the suction cup, as I didn't want to create any pressure points on the glass. With a pick inserted at the bottom, I could heat both sides of the phone. This will ensure when I move the pick all the way to the edge that the side of the phone will actually start to separate. Adding some more heat into the mix, I can slide a pick up the side of the phone, creating a gap. As you can see on this phone, the glass is almost at a complete right angle, which makes it very difficult considering how thin this panel really is. If your back panel is damaged, then you don't need to be so careful with this process, although as I wanted to save mine, this took quite a bit of time and lots of care. However, with some careful prying, I was able to successfully remove the back panel without cracking it. With the hardest part of this repair out of the way, it's time to remove the several screws holding in place the wireless charging coil. Now, unlike previous generations of Samsungs, there is actually a cable connecting underneath. So, after undoing the screws and lifting up the bracket, I will disconnect the battery first and then disconnect the wireless charging coil before carefully removing the entire assembly. However, there is still one piece of plastic which is up at the top of the phone which we'll need to remove so we can get full access to the motherboard. Coming down to the bottom of the phone, we can also remove the speaker assembly by taking out the several screws and carefully clipping it out of place. With all that plastic out of the way, we can get our first good look inside the Note 10 Plus. You can see the all new layout with the dual stacked motherboard at the top and the battery in the middle section. This thing has four cameras on the back, including that depth sensor. The green portion of the motherboard is the daughter board stacked on top. Hopefully these phones won't have any of the issues of the separation between the boards like we've seen in the newer models of iPhones, which has caused issues with touch and baseband after severe drops. Coming back to the repair though, I'll need to remove that SIM card tray and disconnect the series of flex cables connecting to the motherboard. Removing the front facing camera, I can simply lift the entire board out of place. There's no screws holding this down like there is in many other generations of Samsungs. We can take a closer look at that board before we put it aside and turn our attention down to the bottom portion of the phone. Removing the connector cables between the two halves, I can unscrew and remove the USB-C connector. 
I'm happy to report Samsung has reinstated the replaceable USB-C connector, which was previously soldered on on the S10 and S10 Plus. The next thing I'll need to take out though is this square vibration motor. The last thing that'll need to come out is this battery, and unlike previous generations, it takes up the whole width of the phone, which makes it much more difficult to remove. I tried some alcohol, however, I still couldn't get this battery out, and as I needed to use it again and didn't want to damage it, I placed the phone on this heat pad that we were using before, and sure enough, this heat actually helped soften the adhesive along with that alcohol we applied earlier. With enough persuasion, the battery came free and was undamaged. It's now time to install the components in our new screen. This one came with a frame attached for a total of 325 Australian dollars. It's amazing how expensive phone screens have gotten since the switch to OLED technology. You can see the earpiece and fingerprint sensor are embedded into the display, which is quite an amazing piece of engineering. We can start by installing the vibrate motor and the USB-C daughter board. Screwing it down into place with the three Phillips head screws, we can check the alignment of the port by plugging in an adapter or cable. Next is the motherboard. We can place that back down into place, which is quite easy as it doesn't require any screws or any clips. We can then connect all the cables and prep the battery for installation. Applying two new pieces of adhesive. This is not the original factory type. However, it will keep our battery in place just fine. We can then seat it down into place, firmly pressing it into position. I can reinstall the front facing camera and the two flex cables connecting the two halves of the phone. Connecting up the new OLED screen, we can install the speaker assembly and the screws holding it down into place. We've now got the phone assembled enough that we can test it. Connecting up the battery, I can hold down the power button and sure enough, the phone continued to boot up. However, there was a couple of small issues. The speaker sounded really muffled and distorted and the vibration motor didn't work at all. So clearly there was something going on which I needed to fix. After looking into the issues, I found that I unfortunately damaged the vibration motor when I removed it. So I replaced it with an older model from a Galaxy S8. Although being round, it fits and is firmly held down into place by the adhesive and charging port. As for the distorted speaker, it turns out the mesh installed on the new frame was full of glue. So I have removed it and will swap across the one from the old frame. I'd like to mention at this point, if you do a procedure like this, it's very unlikely that the phone will remain water resistant. It might stop a little bit of water, but it's not something that I would definitely guarantee. With those issues addressed, I can reinstall the screws holding the speaker assembly in place, reconnect the wireless charging coil and battery, and seat back down this piece of plastic. I can then reinstall the several screws holding everything into place. I can then use a microfiber cloth and some alcohol to remove any fingerprints or dirt that remain in the phone. I'll also need to remove any adhesive which was left behind by the old rear panel. With that removed, I'll boot up the phone once again and boot into Samsung's diagnostic mode using the phone dialer. In here, I'm able to test all the functions on the phone, including that vibration motor from an older generation of Samsung. Sure enough, it works perfectly fine, and I compared it up with my Galaxy S10, which features the same round style vibration motor, and noticed no difference between the two phones. The Touch and S Pen are also working, so it's clear to say that this Galaxy Note 10 Plus is working as it should. The last thing I'll need to do is reinstall the back panel. Now to do this, as I'm reusing my old one, I'll need to remove as much of the old adhesive as possible. Now this stuff is incredibly strong, so it's unlikely that you'll be able to remove every little piece of adhesive. So I'm just going to be doing the best I can. Using some alcohol and a microfiber cloth, we can go around and try and remove as much as possible. We can then line up the new piece of adhesive and press it down into place with a spudger, making sure it is aligned correctly on all four sides. Removing all of the protective films, I can reinstall the old back panel onto the repaired phone, pressing it down firmly into place. It's still looking a little bit dirty on that back panel from when we removed that phone mount at the start of the video, so coming in with some alcohol and a microfiber cloth, we can polish that up like new. Lastly, we can remove the protective film on the new screen, and we're done. So, this is it. 
My now fully functional black Galaxy Note 10 Plus 256 gig dual SIM. But the real question is, how much did this all cost? I spent a total of $683 that includes the phone and replacement screen. That's an incredible saving of $1,017. If you're wondering, Samsung charges $440 for the same screen replacement, which to be honest, isn't a bad option if repairing one of these isn't for you. This particular Galaxy Note 10 runs Android 9 and One UI version 1.5. Given it's running such an early version of an update, I believe that this phone wasn't used very much as the security patch is from November of 2019. Of course, this being the latest flagship Samsung, it's capable of just about anything you can throw at it. I'm not a huge fan of the hole punch and the lack of the headphone jack, but overall, it's not a bad phone. But what about that vibration motor we changed? Does it work? Well, take a listen. It works just fine, even though it's from an older model of a different size. It is held down with adhesive, the charging port, and the speaker assembly, so it's going nowhere. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for some helpful tips or what tools they use to repair devices, be sure to check out my website, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.